Hey what's up, this is Caleb Ward and in this After Effects tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this cool fireball effect. Alright, so before we begin creating this fireball, I want to take a look at our timeline and show you how we created this fireball effect here. So it's actually not too terribly difficult. There's uh, some fire circles that are kind of layered on top of each other. There's some big flame elements coming off the top. And you can see there's a few kind of inner rings and all of these use the add transfer mode. So they kind of build on top of one another and create uh, increasing levels of brightness. And we also have some sparks here and a few little stylization elements to kind of make the scene look a little more uh, full. So let's hop in and create this effect. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to File, New, Project, and we're gonna create a new composition and we can call this Fireball Effect. And six seconds, 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second with a black background. Click OK. All right, so before we begin creating this fireball effect, you'll actually need to download and install a free After Effects effects preset uh, that I created for rocketstock.com. So if you just go to rocketstock.com and uh, search their free stuff section for a free fire effect, uh, you'll see this post. Just hit the download button and you'll see uh, a fire by rocket stock file downloaded on your computer. Uh, simply copy that .ffx file into the uh, presets folder under Adobe After Effects on your computer. And uh, you can paste it, you can either create a new folder or paste it into an existing folder. I just pasted mine into behaviors here and you'll see fire by rocket stock. And so whenever you hop back over into After Effects, if you click this little hamburger icon here and go to Refresh List, you should be able to see the Fire by Rocket Stock pop up right here. So that's how you install the preset. And this is the uh, tool that we're going to use to create the fire. And it doesn't actually do anything that you're not already capable of doing in After Effects. It'll just help us... Uh, skip a few steps in creating our fire effect. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a background layer. So I'm just going to go to Layer, New, Solid, and we'll select Black, and we can call this BG for Background, and click OK. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is create a glowing red background behind where our fireball is gonna be. And so if you just go to Layer, New, Solid, and select kind of a middle of the road red somewhere right about here and click OK. We're going to go to our shape tool here and we're going to hold it down and go to the ellipse tool and with our solid selected we're going to create just kind of a circle and we'll position it in the center here and we can use the uh, proportional grid here to tell us exactly where the middle is. We'll turn that off and we'll feather it out just a little bit something about there and we'll set the transfer mode to add that's not going to do anything right now but a little bit later it'll uh, combine with all the other elements to kind of brighten up the background a little bit so that's looking good so before we get going any further I'm gonna go ahead and label this layer here we'll call this uh, glowing background and click away so the next thing we're gonna do is actually create a texture for our glowing fireball layer so in order to do that, I'm going to create a new solid. I'm going to hit Command Y, and I'll call this um, Fire Layer, and click OK. And I'm going to apply this Fire by Rocket Stock effect. And so by default, you'll see that there's kind of these fire-like fractals that pop up. And if you kind of scrub through the timeline, you'll see they kind of wisp on and off, similar to the way fire works. It's not exactly perfect, but it's pretty close uh, and it's a really good job especially considering it uses only native tools and uh, effects inside of After Effects. So what we want to do is we want to scale down these fractals here. They're a little big and so I'm just going to go to fractal size here and I'm going to scale it down to right about there. We're at about 22 
and I want to turn down the density a little bit to where it's a little more light throughout. Cool, so if we scrub through here, we can kind of see that we have our little fire fractals going upwards, and this is great. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and pre-compose this, so I'm gonna hit Shift-Command-C, and we'll move all our attributes into the new composition, and we can call this uh, Fire Background, click OK. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to duplicate this fire background and I'm gonna set the transfer mode to add. So now you see that both of these layers are adding on top of each other and we can kind of see our background popping through. Okay, so one thing we wanna do is actually make it to where our fire is thicker on the bottom than the top because this entire rectangle here is actually gonna be the map that our CC sphere effect uses in a few minutes to create the fireball. And so a fireball you would think would have more fire on the bottom and then as it goes towards the top the fire kind of dissipates. So to create that kind of thickness on the bottom we're actually going to create a new layer so we can call this fire2 and hit OK and we're going to drag the fire by rocket stock over again. And just like before I'm going to turn down the size but instead of turning down the density, I'm actually gonna turn it up just a little bit. And we'll turn up our random seed to where we get some sort of different type of fractals here. And I'm gonna pre-compose this. So I'm gonna hit Shift-Command-C, move all attributes to the new composition, and we can call this Fire Background 2 and hit OK. For illustration purposes, I'm just gonna change the transfer mode to Add here. So you can see that we have our fire background two above our two uh, previous fire backgrounds that are the exact same. And our fire background two, I'm actually going to create a square mask. So I just selected the rectangle tool here and I'm going to just select the bottom like that. And I'm gonna hit the F key and turn up the mask feather option. It's right about there. And it's all right that this is a little transparent. Whenever we add in the other effects, it'll actually kind of cover this up. So don't worry about it right now. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is actually select all of our fire background layers here, and we're gonna pre-compose these together again. So we're gonna hit Shift-Command-C, and we'll call this Fire Texture, and click OK. All right, so you'll notice that our background is not transparent anymore. It's actually black again. So you can change that back by just going to the uh, transfer mode here and selecting add. So there you go. There's the background peeking through again. And in order to make it into a fire ball, I'm actually going to add the CC sphere effect and drag it over. And I'm gonna change the shading here and change the ambient to 100 and hit okay. So now if we scrub through, we can see we have this fire layer and the, the flames kind of flicker upwards. And that's a pretty good start for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a glow effect. So I'm just gonna type in glow and drag it over here. And I'm gonna change the threshold here. I'm gonna turn it up to where just about every part of the fire is glowing. I'm gonna increase the radius by just a little bit. And instead of original colors, I'm actually gonna change it to AB colors. And we'll change the color A to maybe a kind of light orange. And color B, maybe we could do a red right about there. And we can kind of adjust the threshold as we need it to where it's starting to look a little bit more like natural fire. Okay, cool. So the only problem that I see here is the fire is actually following this very defined circular outline here, and that's not really what we want because fire is a little more organic than that. So I'm actually gonna add in a turbulent displace effect. And obviously that is way too much warping, so we're gonna turn that down to maybe somewhere around, where are we at? Somewhere about 10 and we'll turn the complexity up to maybe about 
2.8. So you can see that the, the edges are a little more rough here. And that's exactly what we want. And so the last thing we want to do is make it to where the edges kind of move around and fluctuate because we don't want them just to stay still with these kind of ridges because that wouldn't look very natural. So I'm going to hold down option and click on evolution here. And I'm going to type in time times 25 and click away. So what that's going to do is at one second, it's actually going to increase the evolution by 25 degrees. So as we go throughout the composition, it's actually going to continue to to warp the edges and, and make it look a little more natural. Okay, this is looking great. And what I'm going to do is actually duplicate this fire texture layer. And I'm going to offset it by maybe about a second. And I'm going to hit S for scale. And I'm going to turn the X here to negative 100 to where it flips the entire effect. And because we offset it just a little bit, the audience is never going to know that this is just the same texture on the other side flipped. So for our purposes, this should work out great. So I'm going to actually move the endpoint here of the composition down and we can trim comp to work area. And so now it's five seconds long and these two textures are offset by just a second. And that's perfectly fine for our composition and the purposes of this tutorial. Okay, so this is already starting to look pretty darn good. We, can, we have our circular fire core here and it's looking really nice. I'm liking the way that the uh, elements are interacting with each other and I think it has a good color to it. So the next thing we wanna do is actually create some fire elements that are gonna be flickering off the top here because we don't want it just to be a self-sustained core. We actually want it to be interacting and uh, going off the top, just like normal fire would react if it was in the situation. And so to do that, we're actually gonna create a new solid. So I'm gonna hit Command Y, and we're gonna call this solid large fire, and hit OK. So just like before, we're gonna type in fire by rocket stock and drag it over. So before I go any further, I'm actually gonna change the transfer mode to add here. And you can see that these fractals are way too large, so I'm going to turn down the fractal size to where it's appropriate for our composition. So maybe we can be around 2021. 20, okay, cool. And just like before, I'm going to go in and apply a glow effect to this fire to, to give it a little more of a, uh, a deeper red glow rather than a light orange. So I'm going to turn up the threshold a little bit, turn up the radius, and I'm going to use AB colors instead of original colors. And we'll set the first color to a light orange. And color B will set to kind of a red. Click OK. And I'm going to turn up the threshold just a little bit more. Cool. Somewhere about there. And the cool thing about this effect is you can actually mask out certain areas of your composition and the effect will automatically snap to that mask. And so to show you what I'm talking about here, I'm just gonna use the pin tool to create a little mask around where I think the top of the fire flame should be. And you can see that it dynamically interacts with the shape that we just created. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna adjust the uh, the Bezier handles here just a little bit to where the fire is just over our fireball and not really peeking out anywhere else. And I'm going to apply a Bezier warp effect. And what this effect does, just in case you don't know, is it actually allows you to grab certain points of your layer and warp them so that they uh, kind of follow along these curves that you create using the Bezier handles. And so I'm just going to go in and kind of create, excuse me, I'm going to go in here and create a little bit of a warping to where the bottom's kind of stretched out, but the top's a little tighter just so it looks like the fire is kind of protruding from the edges here and going towards the top rather than uh, just going straight up. So I'm going to kind of keep dragging these and messing around with them. Move them about there. Drag these ones down. Cool. 
So you can mess with this as you need. I think this is looking pretty cool for our composition. So if we kind of solo this layer here, we can see that the fire kind of is stretched out and it kind of starts being squished and going towards the top and that's exactly what we want. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is kind of define our edge of our fireball a little bit more. As you can see here, you can see right through the edges here and it's not making for a very convincing uh, edge to this fireball. So to do that, I'm just going to go to layer, new, shape layer, and I'm going to click add ellipse and we're going to scale this up to where it is about at where we want our edges to be. And we're going to go in and add a fill. And instead of red, we want the fill to be black. And instead of adding a stroke, we're actually going to go to layer, layer styles, inner glow. And we're going to turn up the size here to where there's just this soft edge right here. And I'm going to change the color to a little bit more of an orange and hit OK. And like before, we're going to add in a turbulent displace effect to this shape layer. And I'm going to turn down the amount to maybe about 10. Turn down the size. We're about at 50 and turn up the complexity to about 3. Cool, so there's just a little bit of warping so it's not perfectly round. And I'm going to go ahead and pre-compose this, so just hit Shift-Command-C. We'll call this Circle and hit OK. Alright, so I'm going to change the transfer mode to Add. And using our pen tool here, I'm going to kind of cut it in half, but instead of doing completely horizontal, I'll kind of make it at an, an angle here. And we'll feather out the edge here where there's just a little bit of a light edge peeking through here. And if we zoom out, we can see that our edge is a little more defined. And I'm actually going to duplicate this circle, and I'll scale down an inner circle here. And with the inner circle, I'm actually going to add in a fast blur effect. And we'll just blur it out, just to add in a little bit more to this fiery core in the middle. Okay, so one thing you may notice is that there's kind of a disconnect in our design here from the tall flames to the core here, and we kind of want to make this transition a little more smooth. So to do that, we're actually going to create a new solid, and we're going to call this solid uh, top flames, and hit OK. And we're going to add in our handy dandy fire by rocket stock effect. So let's set our transfer mode to add. And we'll turn down the fractal size. So we're at about 15 there. And we're going to apply the CC sphere effect one more time. And the sphere, although you can't see it, it's right there. And we're going to turn up our ambient shading to 100. And we're actually going to use one of my favorite effects. It's the vector blur. And we're going to apply the vector blur to our top fire here. And we're going to turn it up to just about maybe right about 7. And the last thing we want to do is apply the turbulent displace effect to our layer here. And we can kind of increase this just a little bit and this warping is okay don't worry about it and we'll turn up the complexity and turn down the size okay cool and we'll go ahead and turn down the radius to where it's just kind of peeking over the edges of our flame here and I'm gonna hit command shift C to pre-compose and we'll call this uh, top fire again and hit OK and We'll set our transfer mode to add and use the pin tool to kind of cut out the areas where our fire effect should be. We'll kind of adjust the edges here and feather it out just a hair. 
and we kind of want to put it right in this blending mode or blending area rather right in between our top fire and our middle fire there we go so now there's this more smooth transition into the top fire so we kind of scrub through we can see that there's a little more motivation to having the top fire flame up so high all right so the next thing we're going to do is actually uh, create the heat displacement so all fire has like some waving and some distortion that happens whenever you look at it uh, above the fire where the, the heat is actually going through and distorting. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. So layer new adjustment layer. And I'm going to use our pin tool here to kind of cut out the area of the adjustment layer where the heat displacement should happen. So it kind of should happen maybe a little more towards the the top of our composition here. And I'm gonna feather out the edges just a little bit. And we're gonna add in a fast blur effect. We can turn the blurriness maybe up to about mm, eight or so. So now you can see, because we added in the feathering, there's just a slight transition to a, uh, a blurry, distorted uh, heat displacement effect here. And I'm actually going to apply a curves effect. And we're just going to grab the bottom little icon here and turn it up just ever so slightly so that the part where the smoke is coming through is just a little bit brighter gray than our black background. OK, great. So the next thing we want to do is actually create our smoke effect. So I'm going to hit Command Y. And we'll call this Smoke and hit OK. I'm going to add in a turbulent noise effect. And this is going to be one of those rare instances where we actually just use the turbulent noise effect exactly how it comes. And so I'm going to just go to the transform options here and scrub to the beginning and put a keyframe on the offset turbulence. And we'll scrub to the end of our composition and move it up maybe just a little bit. It's right about there so I'm only adjusting the Y parameter not the X parameter so the, the smoke basically just rises straight up and I'm gonna hold down option and click on the stopwatch next to evolution and type in time times we'll say 80 this time and click away and so now if we scrub through we see the smoke kind of evolves and changes as it moves upwards cool and the last thing we want to do is add in the turbulent displace effect to our uh, smoke here. This effect is basically just going to add in a little more organic bulging to create it a more realistic smoke effect. So I'm going to turn down the amount here just a little bit, maybe to about 15. And I'll turn up the size just a little bit. And I'm going to hold down option and hit evolution again. And we'll do time times 20. And just like before, I'm actually going to hit the stopwatch next to the offset of the turbulence. And I'm going to scrub to the end of the composition. And we'll move the offset upwards as well. So now if we scrub through here, we have just some wavy smoke elements. So to make this effect look convincing, we're just going to change the blending mode to hard light. And I'm going to mask out the area where the effect should be taking place. And so it should be kind of on the top part of our composition here, right about there. And I'm just going to turn down the opacity to maybe about 50%. And let's go ahead and feather out the edges. There we go, right about there. Okay, so this is looking great. The next thing I want to do is create the sparks because uh, we want just to add in a little bit extra realism to our fireball here. So I'm going to hit Command Y and we'll call this sparks, not smarks, and hit OK. And we're going to add in our fire by rocket stock effect. And we're definitely going to want to turn down the size of these fractals and the density we want to turn down as well actually we'll turn it down all the way to zero and so i'm going to apply a shift channels effect to our layer here and we'll take the alpha from luminance 
And so basically that made it to where the black is taken out and the lighter layers or the lighter pixels are uh, seen. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pre-compose this. So I'll hit Command Shift C. We'll call this Sparks and hit OK. And we want to mask out the area where our sparks are gonna be seen. So it really will just be this, again, this top area here. And we'll feather out the edges and we want to set the transfer mode to add and these little bits up here are a little too big for sparks so i'm going to add in a simple choker effect and this will kind of cut out some of these extra elements that, that don't belong so maybe just about one there we script through that it might be too much maybe we want to do 0.5 there we go so now we have these real light spark elements that just kind of drift up with our fire here just to add in to uh, the realism okay so from here on out it's really just more about stylization so I'm gonna go to layer new adjustment layer and I'm gonna apply a curves effect We'll drag this adjustment layer to the very top here. And uh, let me rename this adjustment layer to fine tuning. And I'm gonna grab the, the bottom button here and kind of drag it over to kind of crush the, the dark areas just a little bit more and maybe bring this up a little bit. We're kind of blowing out the whites even a little bit more. And I'm gonna apply a tritone effect to maybe cut out on some of this unnecessary saturation. We'll kind of drag this over to a deeper brown orange there. And we want to blend with the original. So maybe we want to do about 90% just to kind of cut out on some of that cartoon like saturation because we want it to be as realistic as possible. And the last thing that I can see that I want to do is just stylize the background a little bit more. So I'm going to hit command Y and we can call this maybe like flare layer and hit OK and I'm gonna turn down the opacity just a little bit. And I'm just gonna use the pen tool and kinda of go in and maybe cut out a little bit of the bottom here. Maybe we can cut out a little bit of the top, maybe just a little right about there. And I'm gonna hit F and select both of the mask here and kinda of feather it out and we'll turn up the opacity to 100 again and change the transfer mode to add. Okay, cool. So this just kind of adds in a little more ambiance to the room. All right, so if you want to download the free project files for this tutorial, just go to my website, cward.org. Uh, there you'll find the project files for this tutorial and lots of other cool After Effects tutorials, along with some cool resources for filmmakers and motion graphic designers. You'll also find a link to the Fire by Rocket Stock effect that was used in this tutorial. Alright, thanks again. This has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.